Here are three weird South Carolina laws that were actually in place or still are. The first one is if a man verbally promises to marry an unmarried woman, that marriage must take place, otherwise he could face a fine or go to jail. Next, you can legally fire a missile but you need to secure a permit first. If you don't have one, well then it's a hundred dollar fine and up to 30 days in jail. And this is the insane one. And it only applies to the city of Charleston. The fire department can blow up your house. And the good news is they can only do it to act as a fire break. Pros and cons of living in South Carolina. Is South Carolina a good place to live? Yeah, I think so. Now, no state is perfect, and South Carolina may not be for everyone. So, here are the top five pros and the top five cons to help you make up your mind before moving to the Palmetto State. Let's start with the pros. It's got a rich history and culture. It's got a warm southern hospitality, outdoor activities and recreation, mild winters and nice weather, a growing economy, plus some tax breaks, especially for retirees. And now the top five cons. It's got a high income and sales tax. Cost of living, we're actually ranked at number 20 in the country. It can get hot and very humid. And there's a risk of severe weather, a.k.a. hurricanes. And we've got outdoor pests and critters. What's your favorite or your least favorite thing about South Carolina? Drop them in the comments. Check out these three South Carolina beaches, all with different vibes. First up is Myrtle Beach. It has a beach that stretches almost 60 miles. It has a vibrant nightlife, including clubs, bars, along with a boardwalk, with amusement parks, a water park, and arcades. It makes it a super family-friendly beach. Next is the Isle of Palms. It's got a more relaxed atmosphere and has some of the most stunning beachfront homes anywhere on the coast making it a favorite for short-term vacationers or second homeowners. It offers tons of things to do, from fishing to boating to kayaking and parasailing. And at number three, and my personal favorite, Folly Beach. It's got kind of a quirky, bohemian, laid-back surfing vibe, which really makes it different from the other beach towns. It's got an eclectic mix of restaurants, shops, and bars, and it's perfect for people watching. It's my go-to when I want to get away from it all. So here are three surprising things about South Carolina. And the third one still creeps me out. Number one, we have a monkey colony here. It's true. It's an island off the coast of Beaufort, and it's home to over 3,000 rhesus monkeys. Number two, barbecue was born here in South Carolina, but it was actually taught to the colonists by Native Americans. Now, number three, this is the one that gets me, it really creeps me out. It's about the Lizard Man. The story started over 33 years ago in a place called Bishopville, South Carolina. And well, don't just take my word for it, check this out. Today, there is a huge story out of South Carolina. It is the re-emergence of the legendary Bishopville Lizard Man. Take a look. <laughs> Seven feet tall, scales, red eyes, and a massive tail. That's the description of the ever-elusive Lizard Man. And now some people claim they have photographic proof he exists. Here's a quick PSA about South Carolina. If you don't like these things, well, South Carolina may not be for you. If you don't like hot summers, mild winters, no snow, or you don't like mountains, beaches, biking, hiking, fishing, history, shopping, people gawking, low property taxes, great employment opportunities, awesome entertainment and cultural events, festivals, a food scene that's nothing short of amazing, and mannerly and friendly people, well, then South Carolina might not be for you. That is all. South Carolina has its fair share of amazing things to see, to eat, and to do. It also has its share of wealthy cities, towns, and citizens. And here's the latest list of the eight wealthiest places in South Carolina. Drum roll, please. Now that was some serious drumming. Coming in at number eight is Mount Pleasant. Number seven, 
Seabrook Island. Number six, Fort Mills. Number five, Tega K. Number four, Isle of Palms. Number three, Briarcliff Acres. Number two, Sullivan's. And at number one, Kiowa Island. I put the link to this article in the comments below. That is all. By now, we're all familiar with the infamous Alex Murda murder trial. What you may not know is the family's property in Moselle, South Carolina, where Alex murdered his wife and son, is up for sale and now appears to have a buyer and the sale is expected to be at $3.7 million. Most of the money will go towards settling legal claims related to the fatal boat crash that killed Mallory Beach. According to court documents, this is how the proceeds will be distributed. $25,000 will go to the Palmetto State Bank, which has a claim against the estate. Buster, Alex's surviving son, will get $530,000. John, Alex's brother, will use $290,000 to pay off the estate's outstanding legal fees. $6,500 will go to Laura Jones, a credit against the estate. 100000 will go to the attorney who is representing the boat crash victim, Connor Cook, and the remaining funds will go to an attorney and common fund who is representing the three other parties from the boat crash. So what are the best places to live in South Carolina? That is a question I get asked a lot. And today I'm going to share with you the top 10 places to live in South Carolina. Now, in full transparency, I did not come up with this list. It is a list that Forbes had put together. These places are all metropolitan areas using criteria such as home affordability, employment, population growth, crime rate, cost of living, and amenities such as outdoor activity, public transit, and access to health care. Where do you think is the best place to live in South Carolina? Drop your pick in the comments below. So here's the list starting at number 10 and working our way up to number 1. Number 10, Somerville. Number 9, Clemson. Number 8, Spartanburg. Number 7, Bluffton at number six is Rock Hill. Somerville comes in at number five. Number four is Columbia. Number three, Greenville. Number two, Myrtle Beach. And number one is Charleston. Okay, this is getting a little bit embarrassing. It's that time of year again, and I don't mean Christmas or New Year's Eve. It's when the major publications start to release their best of lists. And this time, it's Southern Living Magazine's turn. And yep, it happened again. Actually, this is the sixth consecutive time that has happened. But let me just take a second to be clear about something. It's not the publication declaring this. It is their readership who has voted Charleston the best southern city again. Have you been to Charleston? If so, let me know what you think. And if you haven't, well, let me help you get a little bit acquainted. Here is a bit of Charleston's end just for you. I bet that you're just like me, and you're sitting there pondering, how do the other half live? So I decided to take a look to see what might be the most expensive home in South Carolina right now. And currently, the most expensive home in the state is located on Kiowa Island. It's a 10,500 square foot home. It sits on just over two acres, and it's got 200 feet of beachfront. It has nine bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, it's a Cape Cod style, and even has a copper roof. And the price tag, you ask? Well, it's a cool $20 million. Or if you're going to take out a mortgage, it would run you about $116,000 per month. So I'm just going to sit back now, be quiet, and let you enjoy the Zen. Listen up, beaches. Here are another three South Carolina beaches, all with different vibes. First up is Kiowa Island. The beach features over 10 miles of sand and surf. The area is also known for its wildlife and is surrounded by maritime forests and marshes, offering a great opportunity for hiking and checking out wildlife. Overall, Kiowa is one of the most popular destinations and has become some of the most expensive real estate in the state. Next up is Hilton Head. It's been recognized as one of the top family beaches in the country. It's also known for its wide, flat beaches, making them perfect for sunbathing and building sandcastles. The water is generally calm and warm during the summer months, making it ideal for swimming, boating, and other water sports. And at number three is Huntington Beach State Park, a place for wildlife lovers, history buffs, and anglers. It sits on over 2,500 acres, boasts a three-mile-long beach, and at the south end, 
and they welcome your furry family members. There's a trail for hiking, and if you want an extended stay there, there are campgrounds available on site. These are the top three reasons I hear from people with concerns about moving to South Carolina. What are your concerns about moving to or living in South Carolina? Drop them in the comments below. Firstly, South Carolina is known for its extreme weather conditions. Summers are hot and humid and thunderstorms can be frequent and severe. Hurricanes and tornadoes are also common and can cause significant damage and extended power outages. Next, the state's economy is heavily reliant on industries such as tourism and agriculture. This means that job opportunities can be limited, particularly for those without specialized skills or qualifications. And lastly, South Carolina's political climate may not align with your personal beliefs. The state has a history of conservative politics, which may not be appealing for those with more liberal or progressive views. Newcomers are moving to South Carolina in droves. Some lawmakers want to make them pay a Yankee tax for coming to the Palmetto State. And I'm going to tell you the exact amounts they want to charge as that extra tax. I'm going to share with you his piece and use some quotes from the legislators because frankly, you got to hear it to believe it. I'll kick it off with this quote. What people from out of state are doing is coming in and they get the opportunity to be basically become part of our state and what we have already built at no cost, said Senator Stephen Goldfinch. And this is Mr. Goldfinch right here. He continued, they use our roads, our bridges, our schools, and most of them don't pay for any of it. Goldfinch's bill would allow counties to oppose. What is the oldest house in South Carolina? Well, that answer is not as easy as I thought it would be when I started to research this topic. But what I've concluded is, is that it was and is the Middleburg Plantation. It's a famous plantation located in Uji, South Carolina. It was built in 1697 and it was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1970. The plantation is on about 400 acres of lowlands along the Cooper River. The main house is a two-story timber frame structure measuring 64 by 20 feet. It's got three rooms wide and one deep, with a single-story porch on both of its long ends. The plantation includes two other buildings, a 19th century carriage house, and a wing that was added to the main house in the late 18th century. The Middleburg Plantation's historical and architectural significance is well-preserved and is a rich part of South Carolina's Past. South Carolina is at it again. In another national ranking, South Carolina finished in the top 10. Can you guess what it was for this time? I'll give you a few seconds to drop your answers in the comments below. Okay, as you know, South Carolina borders North Carolina, Georgia, and the Atlantic Ocean. The state has a subtropical climate with hot summers and mild winters, but South Carolina is also known for its rainfall. It is actually the 10th rainiest, rainiest, is that even a word? What did he say? State, and it gets an average of 48 inches of rainfall annually, with August being the wettest month, with 3.9 inches of rain. Salem, South Carolina is the wettest location in the state, receiving on average 84.38 inches of rain per year, while McCall, South Carolina is the driest location, with only 39 inches of rain annually. The wettest state, you ask? Well, that would be Hawaii. Stay dry, my friends. We've got some news to share with you today about one of your favorite beaches, Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach is raising the bar on umbrella standards. Say goodbye to those oversized beach parasols and unique designs. Only compact standard size umbrellas are now allowed on our sandy shores. And that's not all. The fashion police are now on patrol and thong swimsuits are a big no-no on Myrtle Beach and in public areas. So, what are the consequences of breaking these rules? Well, now it's considered a misdemeanor, and if you're convicted, you could face a fine of up to $500 or even spend up to 30 days in jail. So, beachgoers, remember to stay informed, or you may end up in some pretty hot water. Let me know what you think about these rules down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.